Uh, Business Insider had this article by a guy named Jeffrey Ingersoll. This is a guy, I, I actually, I have never read a piece of his before, but he wrote a fantastic piece about, the title of it is, The Absurdity of the War on Terror is Becoming Clear. Now this is something I've been saying for a long time, this is something a lot of people have been saying for a long time, but he, he paints it out in very clear terms as to why that's the case. So, uh, Yemen has a very strong branch of Al-Qaeda in the Arab Peninsula, and what they did is they put out a call for global jihadis to make a pilgrimage to Mali to wage holy war on the infidel occupiers. In other words, the French, who are now fighting a war there, and we've also provided aid to them via uh, transportation and stuff like that. So the interesting thing about this is that this is exactly like Iraq in 2006, when the Al-Qaeda branch in Iraq uh, reached out to Libyan jihadis and fighters and said, hey, come help us out here. Uh, so current reports are that the toughened Malian insurgents are basically hanging out in the mountains of Gao, where they plan and stage attacks all the time against the French troops. And that's a scenario that's right out of Afghanistan in 2002. Uh, with an influx of weapons from Libya and global jihadists joining the battle, the fighting could last as long as the eye can see. Uh, and the most recent counterinsurgency fights have started a decade ago, and we are still fighting. This is the endless war on terror that we've been discussing. So while Mali is Iraq-like, actual Iraq is still suffering from suicide bombers. Thailand just killed 19 militants, fending off a really ballsy assault. Syria has devolved into a stalemate between a hair-trigger dictator and the narrowly less than preferable extremist element of Jadhat al-Nusra, which is another type of branch of al-Qaeda. Lebanon is getting sucked into Syria's civil war, and al-Shabib in Somalia is receiving arms from Iran, another group that's al-Qaeda-like. So people are already pointing to an imminent fight with the Islamic Boko Haram and others in Mali's neighboring Niger, and fighting in Mali isn't even finished yet. So what's the big takeaway from this? The last line of Jeffrey Ingersoll's piece is very telling and very true. He says, quote, for every mole America takes out, more rise up. Now, some people might counter this and say, okay, even if that's true, what does that mean? We don't, we don't fight them? Is that what that means? So what do you just want to give up, et cetera, right? But then comes the next big piece of evidence, which is probably the most important piece of evidence. So according to some research that was done all the way back in 2007, by the Center on Law and Security at the NYU Foundation, they found that terrorism before the invasion of Iraq, there were 729 separate isolated incidents. After the war in Iraq, 5,420. Uh, this research is also buttressed by the U.S. administration's own national intelligence research. Uh, they found in a study, quote, trends in global terrorism, implications for the United States. They found that the Iraq war has become the cause for jihadists and is shaping a new generation of terrorist leaders and operatives. And then there's another study by Peter Bergen and Paul Cruikshank from around the same time that argues that the Iraq conflict has greatly increased the spread of Al-Qaeda's ideological virus. So basically, to put it as simple and straightforward as possible, the reality is that the war on terror, as we are fighting it right now, is actually adding to terrorism. It is increasing terrorism. It is, it is spawning more hatred for the United States and for our policies. So the question becomes, how do you fight it effectively, right? And it should be fought, like historically it's always been fought, until the war on terror, which is targeted intelligence, man. You let the CIA and the FBI handle it. You don't use, to steal from 2008 Barack Obama, you don't use a, a hatchet where you can use a scalpel. And now that's become the official position of both parties. Did you know that in Afghanistan, we're still there, right? We have 68,000 troops there. Obama just announced in the State of the Union yesterday, oh, we're going to lower it to 34,000 troops. It's totally cool, totally cool. He didn't even tell you that after 2014, when we're supposed to be gone forever, we're still going to have 8,000 troops there, right? 
You want to know how many uh, people were fighting there? How many members of Al-Qaeda are in Afghanistan? A hundred. But yet we have 68,000. And even if we withdraw to 34,000, that's still way too many. Even if we withdraw to 8,000, which is going to be the permanent amount we leave in there, that's too many. And to think that that doesn't breed hatred, because we do end up accidentally killing civilians. We do end up uh, being the infidel occupier in the heart of the Holy Land. I mean, these are the most basic things in the world. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I know that 2 plus 2 equals 4. Now, do we want to try to decrease the amount of terrorism or not? I mean, the way to do it is to be smart, have largely a non-interventionist foreign policy, mind our own business, do actual defense, do actual national defense, not national offense. Close up some of our 900 military bases abroad. Why do we need all those? Right? Cut the military budget at least in half, because we spend more than the next 14 biggest militaries combined. I mean, these things are no-brainers, man. I've been saying them for years. Other people have been saying them for years. We've been right all along, and we're continually ignored. Why? Because of the military-industrial complex. War is a business. A very small group of people make a lot of money by perpetuating these wars, so that's what we've been doing as a matter of national policy, and it's sickening.